and I'm excited to be back to talk to you more about salmon. Last time you learned about the life stage called fry and about the macroinvertebrates or the stream bugs that live in the water with the salmon and why they're important for the ecosystem. Today we're going to talk about the next life stage which is called smolt. By this stage in their life, they've lost that tiger stripe pattern that helped them camouflage when they were so little, and they look more silvery in color. The smolt are getting ready to head downstream to the ocean. These little salmon might have to travel hundreds of miles to get to the ocean, and they'd follow their stream till it meets another stream, uh, which meets a bigger stream, which meets up with a bigger river, and eventually they find themselves in an estuary. Do you know what an estuary is? An estuary is a place where salt water and fresh water meet, like where a salmon river joins the ocean. And the water here is called brackish, meaning that it's not fresh water, but it's not as salty as the ocean. And this is the perfect place for these little smolt to start transitioning their bodies from living in fresh water to living in salt water. Estuaries have tons of plankton and macroinvertebrates for the smolt to eat and plenty of places to hide from predators. So it's a really important ecosystem for salmon and lots of other organisms. Our local estuary is called the Puget Sound. We do have one special exception to this pattern here in our area. The kokanee salmon, or the little red fish, spend their entire lives in freshwater. They spend their egg, alvin, and fry life stages in freshwater streams connected to Lake Sammamish, and then as smolt, they head downstream to the lake where they spend their adulthood. They never go all the way out to the ocean. Throughout this whole journey, the smolt rely on having cold, clean, clear water. We call this the three C's. But what does that mean? And what are some things that we could measure or test to find out if the water is in fact cold, clean, and clear? Some of the things that we test with our students on field trips on the Greenway landscape are temperature, pH, phosphate, dissolved oxygen, and turbidity. Temperature is maybe an obvious one, right? If you wanna find out if the water is cold, you can measure the temperature. Salmon are ectothermic, meaning that their body temperature is about the same as the environment around them. Salmon need to have a pretty cold body temperature, so they rely on having water that's about 41 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 to 13 degrees Celsius. Now we know that salmon need dissolved oxygen to be able to breathe in the water, so that's another thing that we measure. Do you remember those riffles that we talked about in a previous video? Those are super important because they help get dissolved oxygen into the water. And colder water holds more oxygen, so colder water means more oxygen for the salmon to breathe. Something else we measure is the pH of the water, which is how acidic or how basic the water is. And this is always shown on a scale from 0 to 14. Lower numbers are more acidic, like lemon juice, and higher numbers are more basic, like bleach. Salmon like a pH of about 7, which is neutral. When the water is too acidic or too basic, it can damage the salmon's gills and make it hard for them to breathe. Phosphate is a nutrient that all living things need to grow, 
and it's the main nutrient that controls how much plant life is in the water. Plants and algae add life-giving oxygen to the water through photosynthesis and form the base of the food chain, acting as a food source for those macroinvertebrates, those stream bugs that the salmon love to eat. When phosphate levels are too low, there aren't enough plants or algae to add oxygen to the water or feed those macroinvertebrates. When there's too much phosphate, algae can bloom, meaning it grows quickly. This cuts off sunlight to aquatic plants and causes them to die. Bacteria in the water, represented here by those little brown dots, decompose or break down the dead plants and use up all the oxygen in the process, which kills the fish. This process is called eutrophication. Okay, let's recap. To learn about a salmon stream, we measure temperature, dissolved oxygen, pH, phosphate, and turbidity. In my demonstration so far, we have found these measurements. I'll show you how we measure turbidity, and then I'll talk about what all these numbers mean. And finally, turbidity is how we measure how clear the water is. When the water has a high turbidity, that means that there's a lot of dirt and other particles in the water, making it hard for the salmon to breathe and to see. Think about how hard it would be to breathe and to see where you're going in a sandstorm. Water that has a low turbidity is more clear. We measure turbidity using a turbidity tube. It measures 60 centimeters from the bottom all the way up to the top. The black and white disc at the bottom is called a secchi disc. We fill the turbidity tube with stream water and then look down in the top to see if we can see that secchi disc. Do you see it? That means the turbidity is low. Hooray! Using a conversion chart, we found that the measurement here is 8 NTUs, or nephilometric turbidity units. So what do these measurements mean for salmon? Well, when we analyze our data and compare it to what we know salmon need, we find excellent temperature, pH, and turbidity, and medium dissolved oxygen and phosphate. All of these things that we can measure help us figure out the quality of the water. So this is what we call water quality testing. This is a really important aspect of salmon stream health and it's something that a lot of people do as their jobs. Public land agencies, universities, and other groups that care about salmon have staff members that go out in the field to collect water samples and test these kinds of things. The water quality is determined by many factors and one of those things is pollution. There are two types of pollution, point source and non-point source. Point source pollution, it comes from a single source and it's easy to identify. This could be something like a factory smokestack or an overflow pipe at a wastewater treatment facility. Non-point source pollution is harder to identify because it comes from many different places and all at the same time. For example, when it rains over farms and cities and suburbs, the stormwater carries animal waste from the farms, road salts and oil from the city streets, and fertilizers from lawns into the closest body of water. So we know where the pollutants end up, but we're not sure always where they come from. This week I have a super cool activity that will help you figure out where smolt might travel near where you live. Find your home, school, or another special place on Google Maps, and then try and find a nearby stream. I started by searching for the Cedar River Trail Park, which is right on the Cedar River. Salmon who swim through here quickly find themselves in Lake Washington. As you can see, I've drawn a purple line from the Cedar River Trail Park out to the Puget Sound to help make this demonstration easier to follow. Now imagine that you are a smolt and try and follow that stream all the way out to the estuary, Puget Sound. As I scroll to follow this route, try to look for potential sources of point and non-point source pollution. Where do you see roads, popular boating areas, houses? 
factories, forests, farms, what kind of pollution might come from those places? And which of those places do you think might have the most pollutants? And if that is too difficult or too easy, try and go the other way and follow your stream back to where it starts in the mountains. How do you think we could change the way that we live or the way that we build our cities and towns so that less pollution gets into salmon streams like yours? If you'd like, we would love to hear some of your ideas. So share with us by emailing your ideas to education at mtsgreenway.org and we might share them on our social media. And check out the next video to travel all the way out to the ocean with Val to learn about the adult life stage of salmon. Have fun!